Um, folks, we're the regional chairman, Mr. Darren Adams. A couple of months ago, we met and we spoke about what was happening here. Now we're back for an update. Tell us a little bit of what's going on here on the ground, Bobby. Well, thank you, Shara. Thanks for coming to Linden. Good uh, to be back. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, the Bamia Primary School has become famous, and it reminds us of the famous phrase that we all know, one one dot build dam. Apparently, this is what has been happening here with the Bamia Primary School, mm -hmm. a project that should have been handed over um, to the benefit of the people of Amelia's, Amelia's Ward and the wider uh, Bamia community for those students who, um, you know, were going to be uh, enjoying this catchment area here mm -hmm. comfort easy access um, in terms of to the school um, reduced transportation costs etc uh, when we should have been cutting the ribbon as you can see in the background we have not even yet seen the roof of the building um, put in place and so this is a concern for us we have been speaking about this project from the very first day we highlighted um, one of the concerns was the inexperience of in uh, nature of the, the folks who were awarded the project the mm -hmm. contractor and I think we, safely we can say now and the entire region 10 and the people of Guyana can comfortably say now that we were right that two years after we are no closer to seeing this school being handed over the contractor this year would have received a sum of 268 million um, dollars and still has failed to meet the deadline mm -hmm. and that has now forced the elected officials um, into a position where because we do not want to be accused of sending back millions of dollars from this region um, the REO Mr. Dwight John who is the executing officer for the region, we were forced to, of course, write the Ministry of Finance asking for inclusion projects, several inclusion projects to now become uh, the order of the day so that we do not and we are not accused of sending back money. So we, our councillors were on the ground. They would have been visiting several schools across um, the region at Kokwani, Aichuni, uh, and several schools at Linden and so close to 102 million will now have to be um, split across um, those schools that I just mentioned New Silver City Secondary, Mackenzie High, um, Linden Foundation, Amelia's Ward Primary so that the monies that was allocated um, for this Bamia uh, Primary School can be spent out before the 31st of December, or at least projects awarded um, so that they can become a, maybe a rollover project um, to the benefit of the people of Linden and Region 10. Mr. Chairman, you mentioned something that is very Im important, um, that there was lots of doubts on this contract when it was first awarded. I mean, there was lots of pushback mm -hmm. uh, from the folks behind this contract, the, the contractors. Mm -hmm. uh, we know them as entertainers, and we like them, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we like yeah. them in that realm. Yeah. But I think nobody can't um, say that they aren't out of the depths on this one. This mm -hmm. contract is over its um, allocated yeah. time for completion mm -hmm. by now. Mm -hmm. And every consideration and concern uh, the public has had on this uh, contract has come to fruition, mm -hmm. sadly. Yeah. Um, and this is where we are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know I, I'm, I'm tempted to ask whether the public was justified of in course. some of those concerns. Of course. Um, and that is where um, consultation is important and why it is important. Um, we would have seen, as you said, these persons are they deliver better in entertainment and so when we heard of a contract of this magnitude being awarded to them despite we flagged it and we were concerned we said you know what let's give them an opportunity but let's put the safety measures in place to ensure that it becomes a reality and so we proposed that one we have once a uh, meeting once monthly that they update the committee the works committee and the education committee on the progress of the work mm -hmm. i can say to you that over the past two years if they have met on five occasions that would be a lot because they have not been completing reports they have not been meeting regularly um, and so we are now more concerned because what you will find happening now 
if it isn't already, and I think many of it has been flagged, is that the integrity of this project comes into question. You will find in an attempt to expedite and to save face that the contractors may likely, you will find them cutting corners. And so what we propose as a council is that independent um, engineers be brought in to ensure that the equipment that is being placed here, whether the steel, whatever it is, that it is the what is required and what was recommended in the scope of works. So, of course, we're concerned. I think they should continue in entertainment. I think they, they do a fantastic job in entertainment, but I will not recommend that they come go, go this route again in the future. Great. And, you know, one of the things we saw quite recently is the Attorney General saying that, you know, con contractors who don't do a good work, mm -hmm. um, they are penalized. I hope we don't have to go to that. Well, I understand. But it's alleged, too, that that is just a bluff for the cameras. Because we heard of that statement being made by a particular minister in the infrastructure sector. But soon as the cameras are shut off, people from right within the Public Works Ministry say, the very person turns back and says, look, I'll continue with your work. Don't worry about that. So, so the, for, for PR and for window dressing, many times you will see them standing from the camera and make it appear as though they're penalizing the contractor or they're going to come down hard on the contractor or whatever. I'll say to you that those, if you do an investigation, you will see that several of the same people who defaulted in the past are still receiving contracts today. And that goes against the backdrop. And you know the famous saying, it's friends, families, and favorites. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one of the things I wanted to pick the uh, regional chairman's brain on is the engagement of citizens in the region mm -hmm. and the engagement of the council. Yeah. Um, this is an elected yeah. council. Um, it would be good for government to engage yeah. with them in terms of how yeah. do you move the region forward. Yeah. Uh, we've learned that that's n that hasn't been happening yeah. here. Uh, instead, the government is engaging um, persons who would have run for council mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. didn't get elected. Yeah. Non elected members. Yeah. Non elected persons, rather. Yeah. So. Very important point, um, and we've been experiencing it, and it has intensified since the local government election. Mm -hmm. The budget, for example, the 2024 budget and, and all the previous budget, the budget flows from the consultation you would have with your constituents on the ground. So councillors are mandated to go into their respective constituency. They listen to the concerns of the residents. They document it in the order of priority, and it forms part of the budget. What we have seen happening since 2023, after the local government, because the People's Progressive Party would have received a democratic blow, um, they lost all the constituency seats at Linden. Um, they barely scraped an additional PR seat because what, and, and that was as a result of the massive drive um, for voter turnout and the investment, the billions of dollars that they would have invested, yet people rejected them. And so what they're attempting to do and what they're actually doing is bypassing the elected component of the council and they are using political people um, to engage and if you look at the awarding of the recent contracts, while we welcome the recent um, road projects and so on, which flowed from submissions that we made at the RDC, and we have the documents to show, if you look at who are the persons signing those contracts, there are even candidates who were on the local government elections for the People's wow. Progressive Party. Wow, so this Biden is the candidates signing. getting the brown yeah. bags. Yes, you, you have recordings of one candidate sending around saying that she was told to get her 25 people who worked on E-Day so that they can be paid from cash grant money that is supposed to be going to genuine farmers, genuine business people who have all of the documents. They're, 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 they're compliant at NIS, they have the compliance at GRA, they have the income and expenditure statements, yet they are being bypassed. And monies that are supposed to be going to those genuine business people are finding its way into persons who worked on the in the local government elections on behalf of that party and because of course they made a massive investment this is them now getting their paper bags as you said their returns a very very sad development very here. sad uh, finally on the issue of Bami school i may have missed it mm -hmm. but when can lindeners expect to have access to the school well as a finished product that as is. i would have opened my presentation with here we believe in the famous phrase, one, one, dotty, build, dam. I want the people of Linden and Region 10 and the country on a whole to know that we welcome this school. This is not a concept that was conceptualized just in 2021 or 2022. This is a, a 
project that was conceptualized under the previous government, mm -hmm. the APN, UAFC, and that is why we hold it so dearly to our heart. This is a coalition-controlled region. And if you look across, all of the other projects that were um, conceptualized during that period have been completed while a competent government was in place. If you look across there, you will see the Bamiya Nursery School. If you look across, just behind this building, you will see the Bamiya Health Center. All of those projects were concepts of the APNU, AFC. The Bamia Primary School was one such project as well. However, there was an issue at the consultancy stage when it was awarded first the ENA. There was an objection, mm -hmm. and so there was a bit of delay, and so it had to be retendered. That is the information that we have within the RDC. But if you look at the budget documents from 2017, 2018, when all of this development was happening in, in, in Linden, the synthetic track, the upgrading of the water sector, the farm to market road from, from, from Millie's Idol to the Burbies River, where 300 million was invested, the, the, the empowering of the business community and the farmers um, through Linden Enterprise Network, where today sits over 300 million, you will see that all of those projects were concepts of the coalition government. And so I cannot go into don't care mood because we won this project. We fought for it. We ensured that it was properly justified. And that is why it received the blessing. It's a rollover now to this government. And when one government does something good, it is the responsible nature of any other administration to ensure that they pick up the mantle and continue. Not to have an, a, a situation where, like what happened with the 5Bs program, where all the buses were left to deteriorate in Bartica, in Linden, where mm -hmm. the engine is uh, left and the students are not benefiting from it. Where the hot meal program that they inherited, they suspended it, gave it a friend, and now the children are complaining of the meals that they are receiving. The boats left in the sun, no repairs, the engine not repaired, that the people in the Burbies River are now complaining that of the same issues that we fix, we're back at square one. Kind of like the ban yeah, that uh, yeah, I think that yeah. came out from Trinidad Sounds Square One. Like Irfan and Mara last weekend, <laughs> all the issues are still. You know, like. right now we're dealing with a situation where under the AP and UAFC, we ensure that ICT connectivity was ran across the Barbies River from all of the village, villages there. Where Rooney, Kimbia, Gate Roy, Develt, mm -hmm. all of those communities you could have touched on and, and engage and check on your WhatsApp. In fact, I have a photo where in 28, 2019, Bishop Juan Edgel was in the Barbies River and he was using the internet connectivity provided by the coalition. Ask yourself, why today those services have deteriorated and the people in the Barbies River are no closer now to having direct connect to their elected officials here um, in the seat of government. You know, on the inter internet co connectivity uh, used by the former opposition member, um, that's why the mantra of the coalition was the good life. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Let's look at another issue. Yeah. Thanks.